probably be easier without. All right, good morning. So, we have a friend up here with me this morning. Everybody say, hi, Liam. Hi, Liam. Hi. It's a little weak. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay, all right, it's fine. All right, good. So, for, for children's messages over the past almost 15 years that I've been here, I will often come dressed up as something. But I decided today we're going to dress someone else up because I just thought it would be fun. So uh, we're going to start dressing Liam up here. Um, actually, Pastor, do you want to come help us with this? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm trying to keep you young, you know, keep you moving. Here, hold that for a second. All right. We're going to start with this. Okay. All right. So, Liam, here we go. We're going we're gonna to get this on you. Can you see? It really doesn't matter if you can see. You're not going anywhere anyway. So there you go. Yeah. All right. So we're starting with that. Here we're gonna we're gonna get this next. Okay. No, no. I want you to wait for a second here. Okay. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. It's right here. There we go. All right. We're gonna get this around here. There. Okay, so while I'm getting this on, what do you, what do you think uh, we're dressing Liam up as? A superhero. It worked. They knew what it was. That's good. Well, I mean, you know, if there's no cape, I mean, I understand Edna mode, but, uh, you know, we got to know what we're dressing him up as. Okay, good. That's right. Superhero. We got the cape. We got the mask. You know, most good superheroes has, have a symbol right here. So we're going to write right on his shirt. I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that, Liam. I'm sorry, I was just playing with you. Okay, yeah, Pastor, that's probably good enough. Thank you for holding the cape. Uh, for, uh, do you want to you stand here and like wave the cape? Okay, all right. So we have Super Liam. Okay, he's not just regular Liam anymore. He's Super Liam. Can you guys say that with me? Super Liam. Now, he's not really striking a very good superhero pose, though. Can you? All right, all right, that's not bad. That's not bad. I like it. I like it. Okay. So we got Super Liam here. Does he look pretty good? We got one, yeah. We actually got a couple of shakes of the head. That's all right, though. That's all right. I mean, it is just a bath towel. Not anymore, though. It's a, it's a cape. All right. Have any of you dressed up like a superhero before, like this? You have? Okay, we have a couple. Willow's saying no, but you have before. Maybe at school or daycare, I know you did at daycare before, dressed up like a superhero with a mask and a cape. Were you ready to save the day? Yes? At least one of you was. She's just saying yes to everything this morning. That's, that's okay. Yeah. It's fun to pretend to be a superhero, isn't it? To pretend you can swoop in and save the day. Maybe some of you have thought about how you'd like to be a superhero before. Willow and I had a conversation just the other day, how she wishes she could be a superhero before. Liam, have you ever wanted to be a superhero before? Maybe when I was littler. Maybe when you were littler? Well, now you are! Super Liam! All right, good, yeah. It's exciting to think about superheroes, and I mean, at this point, probably you all know, I like superheroes. I like superhero movies and stories. One of the things I like about superheroes is when they come to save the day, they step between the danger, between the bad guys and the people needing to be saved, the people that can't save themselves, right? Because that's what a superhero does. They step between the bad guys, between the danger, and the people needing to be saved. Well, Pastor is going to be telling us about a real superhero this morning. Okay? Didn't wear a bath towel uh, cape. Didn't wear a mask. 
but did have superpowers. You probably know who I'm talking about, don't you? Who am I talking about? Jesus. That's right. It's not a trick question. It's Jesus. And when he came to earth as a human, and he died on the cross, he put himself between the sin and the danger and the death and us. The Bible says the good shepherd, you know, that's kind of his superhero name, isn't it? The good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And that's what Jesus did. He laid down his life for his sheep, all of you. Jesus was and is the ultimate superhero. Jesus saved the day. And you know what? He wants you to save the day too. You don't have to put on a bath towel cape or a superhero mask. It's kind of sliding down. You can't really see anymore, can you? Yeah. But he wants you to go to your friends and your neighbors and to tell them about him and about the good news of his death on the cross and his rising on Easter to save their day. You get to be a superhero just like Jesus. Thanks for dressing up like a superhero for us, Liam. Appreciate that. Do you think they can be superheroes and share Jesus with others? Yeah. I think so, too. All right. I hope you listen as Pastor tells us more about the Good Shepherd. But for now, let's pray. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being our superhero. Help us to share you and your love and your good news with others to save the day. We love you. Amen. All right, you can go back and sit back down with your families. Love, joy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus. The text is from John chapter 10. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, anyone who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all his own outside, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from him because they don't know the voice of strangers. Jesus gave them this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Jesus said again, truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find a pasture. A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so they may have life and have it in abundance. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, since he is not the shepherd and doesn't own the sheep, leaves them and runs away when he sees a wolf coming. The wolf then snatches and scatters them. This happens because he is a hired hand and doesn't care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. I lay down my life. For the sheep. But I have other sheep that are not from this sheep pen. I must bring them also, 
and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down. I lay it down on my own. I have the right to lay it down, and I have the right to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. That's the text. One of the most famous parables in the Old Testament is when the prophet Nathan told King David a story about a very rich man with many, many sheep and lambs stealing his poor neighbor's one tiny little lamb to serve it up as dinner for his guest. David's blood boiled at this cruelty until the prophet Nathan turned the story right at him and said, you're the man. David was devastated and humbled, and he completely repented of his sin with Bathsheba. In fact, he wrote Psalm 51 for his own repentance and publicly gave it to his people to use as well. Of course, a parable about a lamb would have brought David back to his past as a shepherd taking care of little lambs and to one of the greatest pieces of literature ever written, Psalm 23, that King David wrote as well. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. Point is, the parable worked, and they often do. Sometimes we just need somebody to paint a picture for us or to stand somebody up in a superhero outfit. Fortunately, Liam, where are you? Where, Liam. Oh, oh, there you are. Thank you. Fortunately, we didn't go all the way with that analogy and place you up on the cross and nail you to it because we don't have to do that. Only one superhero was necessary for that role. Well, today we observe something again, as I said, called Good Shepherd Sunday. Of course, you know, those are red letters as well that Jesus spoke to us. But we're going to get deep into the red letters. By the way, please take this home with you. Think about somebody you can invite and continue to invite all summer long to that series. But Jesus is the one telling us about himself here as the Good Shepherd. And as I was working on that Good Shepherd theme, I ran across this painting of a shepherd by Bertram Poole. I've used it one other time in my sermons. I, I love that in the painting, the shepherd is not looking at us as though he's getting his picture taken, right? He's looking at the valley and scoping it out. Poole puts it this way, the shepherd contemplates the valley through which the sheep must go and be led. He is aware of the dangers the sheep will face. He hopes they will trust him and stick close to him listening to his voice and following him as they navigate obstacles in dark places. Wild beasts abound. They can easily kill an unprotected sheep. Once they pass through this valley, they will be in a new age, a more spacious place where a sheep can be a sheep without the danger of being eaten. I like that part. If I'm going to picture myself as a sheep, I definitely don't want to be eaten. I want to know that my shepherd has my back. So all of that and much more is what our Lord Jesus promises us in that picture parable from John 10. It's a powerful picture that perfectly captures the image that the shepherd King David gave to us in Psalm 23. And we need those images, don't we? We're visual human beings. They help us get a grasp on who Jesus is for us. By the way, other people have recognized the power of parables as well, and they still use them heavily today. They're called commercials, right? Little 30-second stories with one major point, basically that you'd be better off with their product. For instance, let's take 30 seconds to watch one recent Allstate commercial. I'm a bird stuck in Larry Bird's attic, and I'm going cuckoo. What the heck? What you got, Larry? May the best bird win. Rick. You may be a legend on the court, but you're an amateur up here. Heads up, Larry. So get all state. Save money, 
and be protected from mayhem, like me. <laughs> now you're the bird stuck in the attic. <laughs> so the message there is very clear, right? Mayhem happens in your life. But if you have all state insurance, you're in good hands. In fact, if you look closely at their logo, there even seems to be a light coming from above as though they really were God's good hands that will take care of you. Of course, just like many other companies, they overstate their case just a bit, right? No insurance company can do what our good God can do, especially when you add to all of the mayhem of your life the fact that Satan will never stop trying to get you to reject God and forfeit heaven. Ultimately, he wants to suck all of the joy out of your life and leave you nothing but fear and trembling and an eternity separated from God. And folks, it takes a lot more than the good hands people to deliver you from that kind of fear. It took the hands of Christ nailed to that cross, bearing the responsibility for every wrong thing you have ever done. It took the stone rolled away on Easter morning, proving that Christ has conquered sin and death and the power of Satan by his resurrection. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yeah, wow, that was lame. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Knowing all about the coming cross and the open tomb, knowing all he was going to do for us. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. As always, when Jesus speaks, he cuts through all the nonsense and the really dumb ideas people have about life and eternal life. He says, basically, folks, please face it. You are not saber-toothed uh, tigers. You are not sharks. Didn't I see somebody with a shark tie this morning? Was that Luke? He does have a shark tie. I thought so, yeah. Little Luke, not the bigger Luke. You're not a shark. You're a sheep with all that implies. You need a shepherd. In fact, the only way you go through life for the abundant life is to go through the gate, through Jesus, the good shepherd. Again, we've heard it many times, but not too many times. Jesus said a thief comes, the thief, Satan, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Again, for sheep, the only way to have an abundant life is to be connected to their shepherd. For us, it's putting ourselves into the nail-scarred hands of our good shepherd. Because we don't get to stay in this sanctuary forever somewhat protected from sinful people who will hurt us. Even if we tried, we'd find that the evil one sneaks in here as well. Followers of Christ do not live in some sort of fairy tale land isolated from Satan and his attacks. And, you know, we also are always pure and righteous. It's just not going to be that way. Philip Keller writes in his timeless little book, I put some of them out there for you. If you haven't taken one yet, feel free. It's one that I like to give out. He writes about how we get to good pasture. He says often we have erroneous, we get an erroneous idea about how this takes place. It is though we imagine we could be airlifted onto higher ground. On the rough trail of the Christian life, this is not so. As with ordinary sheep management, so with God's people, one only gains higher ground by climbing up through the valleys. Let's be honest. Some of the valleys we're in right now are pretty deep in our personal lives and as we try to navigate the current moral collapse of our culture. For instance, two years ago, we tried to warn our state about what we were voting on with Prop 3. Abortion, right up to the moment of birth, and for our young girls at any age with no parental consent. Again, the transing of our young people at any age with no parental consent and no consequences for those who do those things to our children. 
Last year, more of those types of laws came from the Michigan legislature. Sexual orientation and gender identity added to the Elliott Larson non-discrimination law. Businesses now must provide abortions for all employees if they provide coverage for live births. There's a ban on conversion therapy, so-called, of minors. Mental health professionals can no longer counsel boys to stay boys and girls to stay girls or to try to curb their sexual inclinations in any way. Hate speech law now includes also sexual orientation and gender identity. That's the one that could put me in jail if my speech, even from the pulpit, causes an LGBTQ plus person to feel terrorized, frightened, or threatened. Because with all these laws, they've taken away any religious exemption from them. Folks, all human beings, we are called to love all human beings. I do love all human beings. But God has never called us to love all human being, sorry, all human doings. And I will not do that in my personal life or from the pulpit. This year, Michigan will likely pass a death with dignity law legalizing euthanasia in the same state that imprisoned Jack Kevorkian for doing that years ago. Medical assistance in dying, it's also called, which Canada has extended even to their young people. Doesn't that sound nice, though? Assistance, medical assistance. They're not killing you, they're just providing assistance. Not at all as though they're rejecting the sanctity of life and the acknowledgement that God is our creator and we're accountable to him. Folks, please don't misunderstand. I don't want to bring politics into the pulpit, and I really am not doing that. I am talking to you about the word of God and those who are creating laws against that word. We follow our good shepherd. He is the only gate, the only way to safe pasture. Knowing that the Lord was his shepherd is what motivated King David in Psalm 23 to switch from the third person to the first person, from talking about the shepherd to talking to the shepherd. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger for you, my good shepherd, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort. Martin Luther put it this way, the Christian life consists in a growing confidence in God and a diminishing confidence in oneself. That's the way to a life without fear. Jesus calls us to go through the valley, but he has promised to go with us. That makes all the difference. It's an old gospel song you've probably heard at some point, probably from me as well. It goes like this. You got to walk that lonesome valley. You got to walk it by yourself. Oh, nobody else can walk it for you. You got to walk it by yourself. Nobody wants to join in. That's basically the whole song. With father had to walk it, mother had to walk it, and you have to walk it by yourself. You know, it's a catchy tune. You can easily find yourself humming it after you hear it. But for the life of me, I cannot imagine how that ever would have made it into a gospel song category because it is the farthest thing from the gospel you could possibly have. It's a dark, dismal, depressing picture that is the exact opposite of what Jesus tells us in Psalm 10 and of that great Psalm 23. We do not have to walk the lonesome valley of death or any other lonesome some valley by ourselves. When Jesus is your good shepherd, your friend, your risen Lord, everywhere you go, you can say, and you can say directly to him, even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Let's go to him now. Lord Jesus, thank you for walking through that valley of death before us, for your sacrifice on the cross, and for the victory of your resurrection that has become our victory. Help us to walk with you as we go through the valleys of our lives and move us to invite others to join us in that journey. 
Amen. May the peace of God, which passes even our ability to understand it, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus, our good shepherd. Amen.